Hi everyone, Ranger Elizabeth here. So, because you all are stuck at home, we're going to do a little bit of learning today with video. So, we're going to learn all about earth materials, and then we're going to take a virtual hike together on our sycamore trail to learn a little bit more about what the earth is made out of. All right, so the first question we're gonna start with is, what is the earth made out of? So here you'll see I drew a picture of the earth, and what are some things you notice about it? When I look at it, I see two main colors. I see some blue and some green. So when you're looking at the earth, what does the color blue represent? Here, it's gonna represent water. So our first earth material that we're gonna learn about today is water. And we're gonna look for that on our hike. All right, we added water. Our second earth material has to do with all of this green here. So the green usually represents plants, but what are plants living in? Without soil, our plants wouldn't survive. So our second earth material is soil. And this is our fancy science word, okay? You might call it dirt, but today we're gonna call it soil. Underneath all of the soil, we have rock. So that's our third earth material. And my rock doesn't always live underneath my soil. So our sidewalks and our roads are made of rock, but also you might go down to a creek today, and when we're there, we'll see a whole bunch of rocks that were put there by the creek, okay? So these are our first three, and we have one last earth material. And this one's kind of hard to think of, but let's imagine we're gonna go on a walk, okay? So we walk outside, we see all of those pretty plants living in the soil. We're gonna see some water later on, you might see some rocks, but when you're out walking, you might get a little winded, you start to breathe a little heavier. What is that last earth material? That's air. So we also have air, okay? So on our hike, we'll look for all of these earth materials. We're about ready to head out on our hike but we're gonna go over two of our rules that we have to follow when we're hiking, okay? So our first rule is that we're gonna stay on the trail. So we always wanna make sure that our feet are on the sidewalk or they're on the dirt trail. We never ever wanna walk off of the trail into the plants because we wanna make sure that those plants can stay healthy and that soil can stay where it is. Our second rule is that we're gonna leave everything where we found it. So on our hike, we're gonna go for a scavenger hunt and we're gonna pick up different types of rocks and we're gonna look at them and we're going to explore. But when we're done, we're gonna leave all rocks exactly where we found them because it's important in nature that you don't take anything with you. We, you always wanna make sure you left it exactly how you found it. All right, so I'm gonna put on my hiking boots and head outside on our trail and we're gonna get this hike started. All right, so we're starting our hike on the Sycamore Trail and we're gonna take everything that we just learned about rocks and earth materials and we're gonna apply it to some things that we see in nature. All right, so as we hike, we can see that we are walking on a trail made from soil We've got some plants growing in that soil. We've got some big tall trees and I'm walking along a creek. This is Floyd's Fork Creek and it flows through all of our park. While the trail here may look dry, there are some parts that are really, really muddy. So when soil combines with water, you get mud. And while you're hiking, if you see mud, that's a really great time to look for tracks for animals. So right here, I don't see many animal tracks, but I do see that some bikers have been walking for our trail. But as we keep walking, we will look for more tracks. But 
Right now, I'm coming up to something really cool. So check these out. These are roots. And they are roots coming out of this sycamore tree here. Roots are really important for areas next to a creek because they will hold all of that soil and rock and plants together even if there's a storm, maybe there's a flood with some of this water, and it will make sure that the landscape stays together and stays healthy. Remember how I said mud was a really great place to look for animal tracks? Well, check out these animal tracks. Looks like a dog went for a walk on the trail. See his footprints? Look at the water here. It may not look like it, but this water is actually flowing. But as I move over a little bit, I see that my creek gets smaller and the water starts to move faster. So when a creek goes from big to small, the water has less space to move in, so it will speed up. The water is moving so quickly here that you can see it's starting to form a whirlpool. If you remember, air is one of our earth materials. So today is a really bright, sunny day, and I'm on my hike, and I'm breathing in some really great fresh air. Air is really important for lots of our other earth materials. Air is really important for the plants that live in the soil because they need air to survive. But air also has wind, and wind can help move plants out of an area. It can move soil from one place to another. It can cause trees to sway and sometimes even break. You can see behind me lots of broken trees and broken logs. So sometimes air or wind and water, which are both earth materials, can cause things to break. In this case, it caused the trees to break and other times it can cause big rocks to be broken down into teeny tiny little rocks. So we're about to walk down to an area where the wind and water has broken big rocks into little rocks. So here's my creek, but as you can see, my trail has now turned in to a little island made of rocks. So let's look more closely. We've got lots of little rocks here. We also have some little shells. These were once animals. These are little clam shells. You can see down here that we have rocks of lots of different types of sizes. We've got some bigger rocks, some medium sized rocks, and even some teeny tiny little baby rocks. So all of these rocks were made different sizes by water flowing over them, and maybe even by wind that broke those rocks over time. You might be thinking, how did all of those rocks get down there? Did someone put them down there? No, humans did not put these rocks down here, the creek did. So when creeks are moving really, really fast, they'll pick up dirt and soil and rocks and shells and they'll move it somewhere. But here, the water slowed down, and when things are moving slower, they can't hold as many things. So what they'll do is they'll drop them. So the water around here, you can see, is moving pretty slow. You almost can't even tell that it's moving. And because of that, it's not as strong anymore, so it dropped all of these rocks and sand and dirt here and made this island. We call this a gravel bar because it's made up of little tiny rocks like gravel. One of my favorite things to do when I'm down at the gravel bar is to look for fossils. So some rocks are just regular old rocks, but other ones have fossils in them. So let's see here. Check out this rock. It's a rock, but it also looks like a shell. So this is called a brachiopod and it is a fossil. Fossils are rock versions of animals that were alive. 
but they weren't alive yesterday and they weren't alive even a hundred years ago. This fossil here was alive 450 million years ago. This fossil is actually older than the dinosaurs. So as I explore for rocks down here, I want to make sure I know the difference between what is a rock and what is a fossil. So let's look at some examples. So I know a fossil is something that has a pattern. So this is a fossil called a bryozoan and you can see that it has a pattern of a whole bunch of polka dots. But I might pick up another rock like this one and it's pretty smooth and it doesn't have any patterns in it. So I know that this rock is just a regular old rock. So we're going to do a little scavenger hunt and we're going to try and find fossils of different types of old animals. All right, I've chosen a place to sit. So now I'm going to explore the area around me for fossils. Let's see. Nope, none in there about in this one. No, this one's pretty smooth. I don't see any fossils in there. Hmm, look at this one. And this one, I noticed lots of tiny holes. And also a honeycomb pattern. This rock is the fossil of a coral. And did you know that in this coral, in each of those tiny holes, little organisms used to live? Let's see if I can find anything else. This is a cool rock, but no fossils. This is also a cool rock. So this one's not a fossil, but this is called chert. So you might see that it's brown and kind of shiny. Native Americans used to use this rock to make arrowheads. I can see over here. Let me move over there. I have found another one of those coral fossils. And I can also see this cool rock. So look at that down there. It's a really cool pattern. And it's also kind of shaped like it has a point. This is called a horn coral. And while it might look like a tooth, it was not a tooth. In fact, it lived in the ocean and it sat up like this on the floor and it had tentacles that came out of the top to help it catch its prey. Look, I found a tiny version of that. Look at this tiny little horn coral. You can see it's got kind of the same pattern in the bottom, but it's much smaller. You'll notice down here, we also have lots and lots of trees that have fallen over and made big stacks. So when there's a flood, water is so strong, it can pick up almost anything. So it picked up these giant trees and was moving them along the creek. But when those trees ran into something bigger, like this big old tree, they get stopped. And here we've got lots of piles of sticks and trees that have been stopped, and they make really great habitats for animals. So down here in the summertime, you might see some bugs in here. You could even see a snake, because snakes really like to live along these trees next to the water. So this is that rock called chert that I told you about, and I noticed this because it's a funny color. So most chert is about orange, this is almost red. But you can see it's been nicked away at points and it's formed a triangle. And I believe that this was once used as a weapon by Native Americans hundreds of years ago. Look at this really cool fossil. So this is a bryozoan. And what do you think it looks like if it was something that was once alive? I think it looks like the stem to a plant. And it was. So bryozoans were plants that lived underneath the water. So this was a plant underwater. All right guys, so we're near the end of our hike, so we're gonna do a quick review. 
So today we learned all about what the Earth is made out of. And I'm surrounded by all of that right now. Number one, we have air, which I'm breathing in. Number two, we have soil, which is right here on the ground next to me. We also have rocks, which you can see behind me, down here where we search for fossils. And last, we have water, which is flowing through our park. All of these things make up the earth, but they also help change the earth. The earth looks different every day because air, water, soil, and rocks change each other every day. So take a picture with your brain of what the earth looks like around you today. Go out tomorrow and see how does the earth look a little bit different today than it did yesterday. Thanks for joining me on my hike, guys.